che tipo di diportista siete? Preferite il motore? So what type of sailor are you? Do you like outboard or sternboard engines better? Well, the real question is what sort of boat do you like best? Con il motore fuori bordo? With an outboard or sternboat engine? C'è chi preferisce mettere in evidenza i propri. There's those that like to show their muscles and those that like to appear elegant without showing off their power. Oggi si può scegliere quello che si vuole. Today you can choose what you want because the outboards have steadily grown power-wise in recent years and the sternboards, well, there's something really new. Siamo nel Wisconsin, a Fond du Lac, dove c'è il quartiere... We're in Wisconsin, at the Fond du Lac, where Mercury, the most important recreational boat engine builder, has their headquarters. Mercury produce solo motori marini. Mercury only produces marine engines, but whilst the outboards were created just for boats, the inboard and stern boards are engines for trucks, cars and pickups that have then been adapted for boats. Ora, immaginate di essere il motore di un'auto, di dover entrare qui dentro. Now imagine if you were a car engine, having to go inside here, breathing brackish air, trapped in this box with not much air and lots of heat, always having to make the effort to move a great big mass of water without even the help of a gear stick. Welcome to the infernal life of the car engine consigned to a boat. For an outboard though, it's different. It's made for this environment, designed and built to live in salt water, and the hard work of pushing a boat. Ma Mercury ha avuto un'idea. But Mercury has had the simple and brilliant idea of developing a purpose-built stern drive engine for boats. It's called the Mercruiser 4.5. A six-cylinder V3 with 4.5, 4,500 cubic centimeters capacity in each of the two-cylinder banks. 250 horsepower potential, but soon there'll be a 200 horsepower version. It will substitute the 4.3 and 5 liter GM Motors car derivative. The engine was designed for boats, and you can tell it's lower and shorter, but it's perfectly compatible with the old installations, so it can be used to re engine old boats. As it was made to live on board, they studied how to simplify maintenance, taking into consideration that this is a different place to under the hood of a car. I think the technicians will be happy to find everything in reach. Boosters too. Look where the dipstick is for the oil level and the filter. Very easy to change it. And another thing I want to show you is how to tell whether it's a car engine. Look where they put the alternator, here, up high, so it won't get wet easily. They've studied noise levels in relation to the boat. It's not the average jet engine of a powerful American car. It's gravelly, but a little softer too. They've really worked hard to combat noise and vibrations. It's only natural that they've used the best anti-vibration support. Understandable that they've chosen a petrol pump that's more silent, but it's incredible too that they've even got to the point of designing a quieter oil sump. Who invented that? And then they've covered the engine so it cuts the mid to high frequencies, the ones that annoy us. And this is the end result. Now is the time to try out this new 250 horsepower engine.
Il sistema di alimentazione è multiport. It's a fuel injection multiport system, which means that the injection is controlled in every one of the six cylinders, so there's always the optimum amount of petrol in each chamber. Two valve distribution per cylinder. Why only two? Because this is an engine made especially for boats. In a car, the functioning range is much wider, from 1,000 to 600 revs per minute. So it's only right to have four valves per cylinder. Maybe even have variable cylinder timing. But it would only be a waste on a boat like this, which generally goes from 3,000 to 500 revs a minute. So it's not worth making the distribution more complicated. This engine is so smooth, with negligible vibrations, that it almost seems like you're in a canoe. They've chosen to design the engine like this, because they had a very precise idea in mind. Weight reduction. And they've succeeded. This new 250 horsepower weighs a good 62 kilos less than the V8, which is 260 horsepower. Depending on the boat, you can use alpha or bravo shifts, but there's many of 10 different reduction ratios, which, as you know, are equivalent to gear changing on a car. So it's impossible not to find the right ratio for any boat and to get maximum performance with minimum consumption. Today's conditions aren't the best for a boat cruise, but they're OK for a test. A little wind and rain aren't going to worry us. What counts is the data output that these 250 horses here measure. Having six cylinders, unlike the V8 260, which has eight cylinders in the V-shape, should mean consumption is better. Let's see. We're up to 3,000 revs, we're doing 21 knots, and petrol consumption is 23 litres an hour, which means 0.9 miles to the litre. I think I can say for a 250 horsepower, that's a record. But what will it do if we go even faster? 3,500 revs a minute, and speed has increased. We're going 26 knots. Consumption is 28 litres an hour, so again, 0.9 miles to the litre. Absolutely excellent. Right, so now I've given it a bit of gas and a bit of trim. And it's gone up again a bit. Having a look at the readings, even though the conditions aren't brilliant, at 4,000 revs, 30 knots, and consumptions at 38 litres an hour, which means 0.8 miles a litre. We are still looking at record levels. Next to the V8, it consumes a good 10% less, even more than that. Il Sirenio 120 Sandec ha una carena con un D-Drive a poppa di 21 gradi. The Sea Ray 220 Sun Deck has a hull with a 21 degree dead rise at the stern, so it's not a streamlined hull and creates quite a bit of resistance, even though this 250 horsepower Mercruiser has given us very good results, which is a sign that this is an advanced engine in comparison to previous models in its class. Now we're going for it because from 4,500 revs, petrol consumption doesn't count anymore. Again, it's the push, the power and the torque that counts on this super engine. So we've got 5,000 revs and 40 knots. Let's see if we can get some more. With a little trim, the boat is flying across the water. Impressive. 42 knots.
pretty gritty. Look how it veers so perfectly, all thanks to the Mercury's astern drive and the Mercury propellers. The Mercury technicians, who love trying out their engines, and I can understand why. They say that the new stern boards are so trustworthy that they last up to twice as long as previous engines. Tutti questi nuovi motori poi ovviamente hanno bassissime emissioni e rispettano le All these new engines obviously have the lowest emissions and respect the most vigorous environmental regulations. Mercury don't forget one of the biggest aluminium recyclers. Pensate che viene utilizzato ben il 95% di energia in meno per produrre It's good to know that 95% less energy is used to produce engines from recycled aluminium than new. So this engine has low emissions, and when it finishes its work, it will go to create a new unit with no energy or material waste. And on that thought, let's enjoy a bit more sailing.